Yair Rodriguez defeats Brian Ortega by a very strange finish due to an injury that happened to Ortega's shoulder as he was trying to pull his arm out of an armbar. And there's many different reasons for this. Now, there's been a bit of a debate of how much credit you want to give Yair Rodriguez for this win. We definitely have to give him credit for the striking that he displayed. I mean, he definitely showed to be the superior striker, tagging up Brian Ortega all over the place. But in terms of the armbar, we can't give him too much credit, to be honest. And I'll tell you why here. But firstly, we do know about Brian Ortega's shoulders. Ortega does have bad shoulders. He's had surgery on that same shoulder before, and that was probably the majority of the reason why his shoulder got injured. But we cannot overlook the submission as well. Every fighter comes into a fight banged up. And if you look at the armbar, it was high up right into the shoulder. Ortega's entire arm, including his shoulder, was inside the armbar. And as soon as he tried to force his shoulder out, pull it out of there, that's when it snapped. Now, the armbar wasn't actually sunk in. Yair did not have control of Ortega's arm. In fact, he had no grip on Ortega's arm with his hands at all. It was all Yair's legs. You could see Yair's elbow getting tucked in on Ortega's arm, stuffing it against his own leg. And there was an awkward tight space around Ortega's shoulder. So to say that it was an arm bar is kind of not right. Yair was kind of crunching in a tight space on Ortega's arm that made it hard for him to pull it out. Ortega could not pull his arm out. That's why he had to grip his hands together and force his arm out, pull it upward. And we do know that arm bars themselves do not really attack the shoulder in that way. But this not being a real arm bar makes it a very awkward position that they were in that potentially put a lot of pressure on Ortega's shoulder. The fact that he had to find a way to force his arm out of this position tells you enough that there was some kind of resistance and pressure there. And as soon as his shoulder got relieved, freed from the position, that's when his shoulder snapped which tells us from this awkward position that there was a lot of pressure on the shoulder that might have been already banged up going into the fight. And what we know from that also is, Yair did not mean to injure the shoulder. There's no way he thought that was going to happen. But at the same time, things happen. This is fighting. I mean, people are going to get injured very awkwardly. And it kind of reminds me of the Tyron Woodley situation when he fought Carlos Condit and injured him. He didn't think he was going to injure Condit with the takedown, but he tore Condit's ACL with a takedown. So even though you're not meaning to do one thing, injuries that you don't expect can actually happen. So with that, how much credit can we really give Yair for this win? I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. But for the majority of the fight before this, I mean, Yara Rodriguez was on point. His striking was pretty good. He did get hit a couple times by Ortega, who was able to tank his punches and then return. I mean, Ortega's chin is just out of this world. He took a flush right straight to the face that did rock him. Yair definitely has some good power to him, but he brushed it aside, man. It kept going and took even more punishment. Took a full front kick to the chin and just walked it off. I mean, Ortega's chin is just not normal. But the fact that we did see him get stunned, it's not good, man, seeing that going forward. Ortega taking damage is just like who he is at this point, but it's going to be about time when it catches up to him. I don't know if he's going to be like Max Holloway where he just can go on multiple fights taking a load of damage, but the damage he's been taking has been extraordinary. The Volkanovski beating, the Holloway beating, beating and now eating big shots here as well it's really not healthy for him and i know he's trying to make the adjustments i know he's trying to get better at his defense but man there's a lot of things that still need to be addressed because not necessarily everything that yair was doing was complicated was like too complex or off grid the biggest shots he was landing on ortega were just like straight punches and sometimes a big overhand over the shoulder and that was an interesting part of yair's game because he was throwing overhands trying to attack over ortega's shoulder as ortega attacked with a lot of jabs so trying to punch over that and get his head on the inside of the jab seemed to be a game plan of his but Yair adjusted in the fight and he started to throw straight punches down the center in tight with no wind up at all just popping his punch forward no backward motion at all and the reason why he started to do that was he noticed the way Ortega was throwing his jab flaring the elbow out and curving it over from the strange stance that he has Notice how his left hand is idle. It's kind of just naturally flared out to the side. So the punch is going to come over. It's going to curve. Yair noticing this, he saw that there's enough space down the center for him to connect through with tight punches that were straighter than Ortega's. And through that, he was able to connect cleanly and even fading and pivoting out. Yair's movement is just absolutely amazing to watch. That kind of punch was something he started to go to and was more successful with. But not only that, whenever there's a Yair fight, there's always going to be some unique creativity. Squaring Ortega out by kicking the inside of his leg to make it come outward is going to widen Ortega's stance, which is going to open up the head to be more exposed to punches. When you square up someone's stance, their linear head movement gets a lot more limited 
but their lateral head movement can be there. So Yair had a decision to make, either throw a straight punch or a looping punch around the side. He threw a right hook knowing that lateral head movement was the way that Ortega was able to move, not necessarily linearly. Great stuff there by Yair Rodriguez. And not only that, remember when we broke down Yair's fight with Max Holloway and we were able to dissect a lot of the things that Yair did? Copying Volkanovski and Dustin Poirier. Many combinations, many shot placements that Yair is not necessarily known for, he implemented in that fight, learning from the game, studying other fighters to see what works. Interesting enough, last week, Rafael Fiziev defeated RDA with a combination where he faked the flying knee and then attacked with the right hook, left hook combination, getting RDA to react to the fake knee, which is going to cause a perpetual motion in one direction that Fiziev is going to be able to hunt down very quickly. Yair did the same thing to Ortega. So a week later, Rodriguez added something to his game that he just saw. He is a student of the game. That is someone who pays attention. He faked the left knee, got Ortega to start moving, and that knee is turned into a big step, which is going to cause him to hunt down Ortega faster than Ortega is able to move away. And also, as you know, human beings move faster forward than they do moving backwards. So what he does is he puts together a similar combination to Fiziev. But instead of going with the right hook, he comes down the center with a long right straight, shifts into the opposite stance, takes off the outside foot to line up a big left hook. Not too different from Fiziev. And of course, Ortega is able to tank the punch, eat it on the chin, and then punch back at Yair. I mean, most guys are not going to be able to do that. Ortega can. And that's ultimately the end of the breakdown of a very short fight with not too much action, to be honest. Maybe they run this back. I would be up for that. Yair said he doesn't want to fight Ortega unless it's for a title because they are friends. He doesn't want to do this again with Ortega. And instead, he wants to fight for the title. And how can you blame him, you know? He wants to fight for the belt. It's either him or Josh Emmett. And knowing now that Charles Oliveira is booked with Islam Makashev, Volkanovski is going to have to defend his belt whenever he comes back from that broken hand. Still insane he beat Max Holloway that badly with a broken hand. So whenever he comes back, maybe he's able to defend his belt in December or something like that against either Yair or Josh Emmett. I think the easier fight would probably be Yair. So it really depends how Volkanovski is going to look at this. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown, and if you did, make sure to give this a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.